All right, today's lesson is talking about similar figures. First of all, let's get through a few bell work problems. This first one is another one of those problems where we're trying to find the distance or the length of this diagonal right here, which we're going to call C. And we're going to find it by making a right triangle with this side and this side. So this side will be one, two, three, four. And the bottom or base will be one, two, three, four, five lengths long. So to find C, we just do C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And then we will square both of those numbers and get 16 plus 25. And that's going to be 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. So C squared equals 41. So then if we take the square root of 41, that will give us the answer that we need. So let's grab a calculator and see what that happens to be. So we're going to do the square root of 41. And so that's what this little key is. So square root of, oh, we got to type in 41 first and then square root. So that's going to be 6.4 if we round it to the nearest tenth. Okay. So there's our first bell work problem. The second one, find the value of x. Well, we know that the two angles that add up to a, a right angle are complementary. We just know that in order to find the missing one, we just have to subtract the one we know from 90. So 90 subtract 41 degrees will give us what x is. So that'll be 8. And then 10 minus 1 is 9. And 8 minus 4 is 4. So x equals 49 degrees. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, we're going to find the missing angle. Well, this one's pretty convenient because we know that the three angles of a triangle add up to 180, and if those two are add up to 120, or, yeah, 120, then we just need another 60 degrees here in order to get our 180 degrees. Now, to classify this in as many ways as possible, if all the sides are the same, we're going to call it equilateral. So equilateral will be one classification, so which stands for equal sides. And then since uh, we've got all the same angles and they're all less than 90, that would be acute. So there we go. Okay, uh, moving right along. Today we're talking about similar figures. What do we mean by similar figures? Well, similar figures are, the, are described in this way. Two figures are congruent if they're exactly the same size and the same shape. So that's con congruent figures. But what are we talking about when we say similar figures? Similar figures have exactly the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. So this means that all the angles inside of these triangles, so all the corresponding angles are the same. But the sides may not be the same length, but the sides on each triangle will be proportional. For example, if this red line right here happened to be 2, and we know that this one was 4, then every line on these other dimensions would have to be twice as big as in the smaller one. For example, if that, would, if that was 3, this would be 6. And if this side on the smaller triangle was 4, then the bigger one would have to be 8, because all of these sides would have to be twice as big as each of these sides, according to that first little relationship we, we made. Now, not all triangles, similar triangles, are going to be half as big or twice as big as the other. There will be different ratios that we'll see as we go along. Okay, similar figures. Some of the traits that we can notice on these similar figures is that all the corresponding angles are congruent. So if we look at angle B, and angle E, 
have the same amount of measure to them. So they're both 95 degrees. The same will be true of this angle and this angle, as well as the smaller angle. Even though they're different sized triangles, because they have proportional shapes, all the angles are congruent. So keep that in mind, that's very important. Okay, another thing about similar figures that all the corresponding sides are proportional, which is what I've been trying to kind of introduce to you with this idea. For example, if this side is three, then the same left side, and then the bigger one is six, we know that this bigger one is twice as big as the smaller one. And we see that same proportionality on these other corresponding sides as well. And that will, proportionality will hold true for all similar figures. Okay, now one nice thing about proportions is if we, if we write a proportion, in order to solve the proportion, which is just basically a, an equation that has a fraction on each side, then all we have to do is cross multiply and divide to find the solution to our proportion. So keep that in mind as we go through these, we will be creating some proportions and solving them in order to find some missing sides of similar figures. <clears throat> Here's three proportions right here. So in order to solve those, we're gonna cross multiply. So we're gonna do six times six, which is 36. And then we're gonna divide by nine. 36 divided by nine is four. So in this case, W equals four. All right, on this next one, we're gonna do um, 15 times 12. So we better get our calculator out. That's kind of a big number. 15 times 12 equals 180. So that will give us 180 over 10 equals A. So when we divide 180 by 10, we get 18. So on this one, A equals 18. Okay, on our next one, we're gonna cross multiply. We're gonna go six times two is, maybe we better get a different color. Six times two would be 12. And then we have 12 divided by four equals Y. And 12 divided by four is just three. So when we solve that proportion, we get three. So that's how we solve proportions. And we're gonna be doing that in the process of doing these problems. Okay, so we're gonna use similar figures and proportions to find a missing measure using a ratio on their sides. So in this case, we're, we're looking for X. So to set this problem up, I like to write down what it is we're looking for. We're looking for X. And then the side that corresponds to it on the other triangle is this four here. So I'm gonna make a ratio out of X and four. And then to solve, to find out what X is, I just need to make a proportion out of the other two other numbers that I know on these same similar triangles with the six being on top and that three being on the bottom. Just like the X on this bigger triangle was on top and the four on the smaller triangle was on the bottom. So now we're gonna cross multiply. Four times six is 24. 24 divided by three equals eight. So that's what our X value is going to equal in this case, eight. So there we go. All right, how about on one like this? If triangle ABC and triangle XYZ are similar, find the missing side length. So we are looking for this missing side length over here. We'll just call it X. And since X is the left side of this similar triangle uh, to this one, we're gonna make a proportion with X on top and five on the bottom. And that will equal the same type of a ratio of, of these other two sides. So we can do 54 over six. 
Or if you wanted to, you could have used 72 over 8 and still got the same result when we got done. So we're going to mold it. We're going to cross multiply 5 times 54. And we're going to need our calculator again. So 5 times 54 equals 270. And then 270 divided by 6, that equals 45. So in this case, x will equal 45 by the time we cross multiply and divide. So we could label it over here, 45. And now these triangles have the numbers that represent proportionality on each side. Okay, what if we have some shape that doesn't look quite like a, something we're used to, like a rectangle or something like that? Well, this one's kind of multi-sided, multi so one, two, three, four, five-sided. So I guess it's some kind of a pentagon because it has five sides. But we're looking around and we find that we are looking for X right here. So let's write down an X. That's our unknown. Now X corresponds to this number two on the other polygon. So I'm going to make a ratio out of this X and that two. Then I'm going to look for two other numbers on each of these shapes that we can use to make a ratio. So since we use this one over this one, let's just use four over five or the bottom ones here because those are numbers that are pretty easy to work with. So four over five. And then we are going to cross multiply and divide. So two times four is eight. And then eight divided by five will give us what? So here's our calculator. Eight divided by five gives us a nice number of 1.6. So x would have to be 1.6 for this triangle to be similar to this triangle so that their sides are all proportional. All right, here's another one. Find the missing length of this one. This is on the back side of our notes in case you hadn't turned over there. So we're looking for x. So I'm going to write down the missing value. And x corresponds to this 2 over here. It's on the up and down side of that triangle. So I'm going to make a ratio out of those two numbers. And then I'm also going to make a ratio out of these two other known sides, 7 and 3.5. Now it's important that if you, when you make your ratio, if you do X, this side over this side, you've got to do this over this as well. Otherwise, you will kind of confuse your ratio and, and get an, an erroneous answer. So we're going to do 2 times 7 divided by 3.5. So we have our calculator. 2 times 7 divided by 3.5. And so we end up with x equals 4. Okay, so you see how this is working? These aren't too bad, are they? Okay, let's uh, keep... Keep going. We've got another one to try out here. So we've got this one. We're looking for X again. And X corresponds to this 4 on this other triangle. If you notice, it's the, the side that's across from the right angle. So X corresponds to 4. So we're going to make a ratio out of X and 4. Which means we're also going to have to make a ratio out of 5 and 2.5. So 5 on top and 2.5 on the bottom. So let's uh, cross multiply and divide. So four times five is 20. 20 divided by 2.5 will give us X. So 20 divided by 2.5 equals eight. Oh, that's a nice, Nice, easy to use number. So X would have to be 8 in order for these two triangles to remain their similarity and to be proportional with each other. 
Okay, so now let's get to that last question. This is on Alex. So we're going to see how Alex is going to want us to solve this, and this could be kind of tricky, kind of interesting. So complete the three pairs of proportions below. So AB over AC. So AB, AB is right here, so that would be 11 over, and then AC is 8. All right, and then the next one is AB. AB, which is 11 over 5. And then AC, which is 8 over BC, and BC is 5. All right, okay. The ratio of the lengths of the sides of the triangle XYZ that correspond to the sides of triangle AB in the ratio above. So, which one on XZ here corresponds to that 11 up there? So, we, first of all, XZ is 8, right? XZ corresponds to the side. Oh, so wouldn't that be... We've got 8 over 11, so what side over here would correspond to that? So we you know, click on an arrow and type in the correct number. So if XZ is 8, or excuse me, XZ would be 16 on that one. And then the top number would be 22. All right. Then what about XY? XY, that's also 22. And then the number on the bottom, which would be, so A, that corresponds to BC. So BC, so that would be 10, 22 over 10. Okay. And then on our last one, YZ, so the, the ratio of Y to Z, so that's that one right there is the same as BC over here. So the YZ would be 10, so we're going to have 10 on the bottom. And then on the side over here, we're going to have this value, X to Z, which is 16. Okay. Now, choose the correct statements that are about the answers to part A. Each pair of proportions, the lengths of the sides of ABC, are in the same ratio as the lengths of the sides of XYZ. This is a coincidence. We would usually not expect. That doesn't sound right. If these are similar, we do expect this to, to occur. In each pair of proportions, the lengths of the side lengths ABC are the same as the ratio of the side lengths of the sides of X, Y, Z. This is because we compared the sides of X, Y, Z that corresponded to the sides of A, B, C, and the triangles are similar. That looks like a pretty good candidate. Let's put a mark on that. Okay, so this one says that they're not in the same ratio, which is not correct. And then this one, in each pair of proportion, the lengths of the sides of A, B, C are not in the same ratio. So both of these are eliminated because they don't say they're in the same ratio. So that is our how we do this. Now, we, you may have to fill in a few more pieces, like AB up here would be 11, and BC is 5, right? So you're kind of filling in information so that you can see that these are the same ratios. So this is the kind of problem that you're going to encounter on Alex as well. So, good luck on your assignment. It's Alex assignment number 58, and we'll hand out some work papers for those problems that you do need to show work on. Thank you very much.